Hi all and welcome to Southern Cross Amateur Astro where we continue our video user guide into APT by taking a look at the object browser. Uh, this shouldn't be a too long a video so let's get straight into it. So the object browser can be accessed in different ways and the way you access can determine what it does when you select an object. Now the first three ways all act exactly the same way which is through the gear tab on your telescope here if you can use that object there uh, in the tool tab under your object calculator uh, you can select the objects there or you can use the alt o shortcut and all of these will have similar effects when you select an object which is uh, i'll say triangulum galaxy now when you hit ok or double click on it which has the same effect what happens there when you've used these methods uh, you'll see in the object calculator the object size is filled in if available uh, not all objects will have a size especially if you import ones into your custom or to do in the gear tab it fills in the coordinates for your RA and deck go to so you can hit go to and go to it uh, on the cam tab it fills in the object name which will be used in a file creation and of course if it has a size set it will show you a circle on your screen to show you how much of your sensor space the image will take up but that's only if you access it that way now the another way to access it is through point craft where it has two and these both do exactly the same thing uh, if you select an object it will just fill in the coordinates of the box next to where it is so object uh, I'll just click OK and use the same object so it just fills in the door coordinates there and it will do the same for the go to plus plus section of it as well so that's just filling in those boxes and the final way is through your camera editor and commands um, I'll just pick a plan here tell it I want to add a script or command and if you go into your commands here you will have go to plus plus in there and again it'll do the same as the last ones we did and just fill in the coordinates for that object in here so it won't do any of the other things it does elsewhere I'll just cancel those out I don't want to do them so that's the different ways you can access the object browser so for this I'm just going to access the object browser with the shortcut alt o I oh, didn't want to do it alt o that's better thank you and this brings it up and by default it comes up to the default sky uh, deep sky screen um, down the bottom I'll hit this one first you can show an extended list uh, I think there's 375 items in the standard list and the extended list extends that out to over 21,000 getting close to 22,000 objects in there so when we go up to the top here uh, you'll see you've got a search box and basically you just enter something in the name of the object you want um, that you want to search for uh, let's see tarantula nebula is 2070 that's a popular one down here in the southern hemisphere and uh, so I just you can either hit enter or you can hit the search button and it will search through until it finds it didn't quite find it there so I hit next and it goes to the next line where it is so that's now the object that's selected um, I can hit go OK or whatever and it'll do what I do normally now you have five tabs across here uh, deep sky custom and to do are all very similar in how they work um, because they're based on the objects and the stars is very similar uh, maps is just a map of your night skies I'll show you that in a second but what you got here these are your different columns across here uh, the numbers or name or designators of your items it might be an NGC an a messier object M8 M1 whatever it might be an IC or something similar like that an SH but they're all listed in there other names it might be known as uh, whether that's another different numbering system or the actual common names from so tarantula nebula as you can see there um, then you have your types you can actually sort these by your types or filter it by types when I'll show you in a minute um, then the constellation it's in the RA and deck, uh, the magnitude if known, as you can see there's some here without magnitudes in them, you can either find that in and fill it in yourself in your other um, custom and to-do lists if you want, um, then you have your size if they're given as again you'll see some of these don't have size, when they don't have size it doesn't fill in the uh, size on the tool tab or give you the circle on the screen and that's size in arc minutes 
then you if your camera is connected and your pixel size and uh, your sensor size is put in there it will tell you how big it is on your sensor itself so you can very quickly see whether it's going to fit or not even if it you know, does seem it might fit uh, the circle does the same thing but this is actually a numbered one that you can look at and the current altitude in the sky based on your location so you need to make sure your location is correct directly under that is the uh, some details of the objects a lot of this is the same details you have up here um, about the only thing it does a bit different is the distancing uh, thousands of light years um, and it's as a location rather than the RA and deck um, you also have an option here I'll look directly underneath this you have a short bit of interesting facts about him you can read on about that but if you want to you can go to the APT download page and click on the object browser tab and you can download an audio file which covers just the base list at the moment um, and it just gives you some of the details that are written here I'm going to shut my mouth for a minute and just play this one for the Tarantula Nebula so you can just know what you're going to hear. NGC 2070 or Caldwell 103 is known as the Tarantula Nebula and is an H2 region in the Southern Hemisphere's large Magellanic Cloud. Considering its distance of about 160,000 light years, this is an extremely luminous non-stellar object. Its luminosity is so great that if it were as close to the Earth as the Orion Nebula, the Tarantula Nebula would cast shadows. At so that's just what you get when you play on them. Uh, interesting facts. That's an interesting one about the Tarantula Nebula. If it was as close, you'd get shadows from it. There you go. So that's what that is there. You don't have to have them. But if you want to and you know, just want to listen to a bit of information, just go to the download page, object browser, and you'll find them there. Um, going down the bottom from there you have your object filter uh, from this you can specify a type of object you want to have a look at uh, nothing specified at the moment but I'll go in and say um, I want to do galaxy clusters there you go and this is a list of galaxy clusters I could get in my night sky at the moment so if I want to do a galaxy cluster I can select one of them um, diffuse nebula oh I've got none above my altitude limit that's funny um, dark nebulas there we go but you can just do what you like um, I don't actually use it so or not often anyway so I just leave it unchecked then you have your altitude filter it'll only show objects that are above the altitude you select here um, I can't start imaging at all until things are above about 25 or 30 degrees but I set it at 10 just so I've got in my list things that are going to be coming up and going visible in the next few hours that I can image and then of course you have your uh, of your um, choice for whether you want just the short list of about 400 objects, I think it's 375 or something, or to show the extended list which takes it up to over 21,000 objects. I use the extended list because I do use a lot of objects that aren't in the short list. It's as simple as that. Now the show button, uh, that's if you have your planetarium connected and set up and running. If you hit the show button, it will show you the object that you're uh, looking at in the sky. So I'll go here, I want something that's pretty high. Um, let's go Pallades M45, I'll select that. And I click on show, and if I switch to the planetarium, there you go, it's lined it up in there. Um, so if I go back and pick something else, Okay, we'll go Orion, and I'll do the same thing. Click OK, switch to the planetarium. Oh, why didn't it do it? Oh, because I clicked OK, I didn't click Show. I'm an idiot, aren't I? <laughs> I'll go back in again. Uh, it's on Orion, I'll click Show. <laughs> and then we'll try and work that one out. There you go, Orion's in my, my screen. <laughs> I'm doing well tonight. Ah, Saturday night, what the hell. Um and add in to do list um, because this list is so long you're not going to always want to go through and uh, search for the one you want so you can click on add in the to do list so I'll add a Ryan into my do list to do list and I forget over to do list oh, it's added there it just saves searching through all these for you know a few objects you might want to do later on and of course OK selects the object you want um, if I believe that if you hit shift OK 
um, it'll copy it to the um, clipboard so you can use that later um, just let me check I'm just going through here uh, da -da 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 -da. okay so it's not going to tell me that um, shift click shift click on OK we'll copy it to the clipboard OK for the last selected object yes I was correct there sorry about that I should have checked that earlier <laughs> um, but there you go and of course cancel button does a cancel so I'm just going to cancel out of that and that's all for that page there um, also I better get back into it there's more to do uh, the stars very similar thing you have an extended list um, or just a standard list these are the standard list just generally um, alignment stars people might use but uh, using the extended list gives you more stars and there might be stars you actually want to image which you can do there uh, show only visible stars makes sense because you don't want stars that are below the horizon anyway so that's it there and again the show button um, let's pick something uh, a crux here that's something that's going to be down near the horizon um, I'm pretty sure but there it is down there um, zoom right in and it's orientated in there as you can see it's a double star if you get right in so that's it again the show is the same as before then you have maps and these are just the sky maps of your local area with your constellations and the f few of the bigger stars name uh, north or south if you select a star in here um, it will I've done it again double clicked <laughs> silly habits um, if you select it in there and it's one in the other hemisphere to where you are it will switch over to that hemisphere um, or if it's something right on the edge of the north south it might switch over there but you can do that manually as well here so that's just something to have a look at the custom and the to-do list these are very similar so I'm just going to do one of them um, and show you because the to-do list and the custom list are all both exactly the same um, again you have your object details at the top in your columns uh, basically the same as what you have in the other ones um, so you don't have to worry about that I've told you them the object data a little bit more data covered here and this data is editable for you um, so you can edit it you can add a new one which means you've got to go through and do all the details yourself you can edit a current one which is handy when you import them which I'll get into in a moment um, you can delete an object out of your custom list uh, again you've got the show button so I'm here on the monkey's head so let's go have a look at the monkey head now and there's the monkey head nebula well how high is that up I didn't realize I'd get a good it's a pity I haven't got clear skies at the moment so that's the same as then and you can actually take it from your custom list to your to-do list um, I wouldn't do that personally um, because what I do is I use the custom list for either items I've imported um, mosaics is the one I use it for most often or if you're not centering on an object um, I can import the object details from um, so I do use telescopius but you can get it in different ways uh, you can get it from your plate solving where you use the aim to get onto a target and I use it for ones that where I'm not centered right on the target I might get, want to get into the middle of two different targets at the same time I'm imaging but that's what I use the custom list for the to-do list is actual targets that I can get from the deep sky list or whatever that I want to have in a short to-do list but that's how I use them you might use them differently again the filter types down the bottom um, and the altitude filter same as the other ones but then you have your import and export list um, for an export list you can export that all objects or only the selected objects it's up to you if you want to move them you might have been using this in your simulator or whatever uh, but you might want to export them out to another take it to another computer or whatever that's export import list um, it lets you import from a various different ones if you've exported it from another APT setup uh, a browser list for telescopius uh, C2A CDC uh, the different ones you can get from there uh, HN sky hello northern sky 
uh, mosaic frames from CDZ and mosaic frames from Telescopius. So the Telescopius one up here and same with when you get to CDC and that um, is a single frame. Uh, they import them as a different format for the mosaic frames. And as an example, I use Telescopius. I'm going to do a uh, import of a, just a quick one I did for for uh, the Orion Nebula uh, for a uh, four panel uh, mosaic. So here we are, M42 mosaic. Just click that, and the records are imported. And as you see, there's not a lot of information in here, and I will have to go in later, and I can edit out the information and everything else I want there. Um, so I'll add proper name. Oops, I'm not on the right one anyway. Um, I'll just save that. Sorry, yeah. When you get in here to edit, as you can see, there's not. I'll edit the name. Of, I'll put in you know, an M42 panel one, etc. Names and notes. I can do all that myself later on, but this is a lot like the information you're going to receive when you do one um, so that's what you do for that and of course then you've got your OK and cancel buttons like everything else and as I said the to-do list works exactly the same you have all the same settings and you can do the same thing so that covers your object browser uh, any questions class <laughs> so object browsers done um, I'll finish this one off here uh, wish you all clear skies and I will see you in the next video. Take care everyone. Bye